before you watch this video, you may want to watch the video where we learn how a toilet works first. Whoa. So where does all the water go? Well, that's a really good question. So if you look up here, we can watch it right there. Whoa. And it comes down, comes through the piping, and from here it's gonna leave and go out to the sewer system. That way it leaves our house. So these are pipes that you would see in your own basement or possibly they're hidden inside the walls. But this is the same type of piping system that you would see in a house. And this is the pipe that comes down from the toilet right here. And as it comes over, it washes down. And then all of the stuff that we left in the toilet comes down and out. And then all of this is great. It goes down at a downward angle. So gravity will take all of that water away from our house. Fergus, it's just like you're drawing. It, it is. You guys drew something that was just like this. You had the sewer on your drawing, knowing that we got to get rid of all this wastewater, and that's exactly what it does. You guys think this is pretty cool, being able to see the toilet actually flush through the piping? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's pretty cool, too. Is our drinking water and toilet water the same? So, the answer here is going to be a little gross, but I'm going to fix it. <laughs> yes, but... We send it out to the sewer, and then a company called MSD collects all of it. They take it to a plant, and they treat all of the water so it's no longer harmful. They put it back into the Mississippi River, and then we pull our water from the Mississippi River, and we bring it into a filtration system, and they filter all the water, making sure that it's safe for all of us to consume, and they deliver it back to our houses. Huh. Good question, Fergus. That's a great question. Is that that kind of lines up with your drawing almost. It does. Water coming from the river and it goes back out into the sewer, but then we clean the water and we deliver it back out to the uh, rivers. What happens when we clog the toilet and how does the plungers just fix it? That's a pretty cool question. We actually still have our 3D model. So if we had a clog, a lot of times that clog is going to be right here. So if we have something stuck right inside there, the plunger makes a seal all the way around this opening and then force when you push down on it the force of the air pushes on there and it'll push that clog right through and it goes out and goes out to the sewer so it's going to be the force of the plunger that it the, that it creates it's going to move all that stuff right through does the toilet water really flush in the opposite direction south of the equator we all want to know that's a good question I don't know the answer. So. <laughs> How are toilets built? Yeah. Ooh, that's a really good question. So each manufacturer of that toilet, the people who make them, have a design. They have somebody design what they want, and then they make a mold out of clay, and they send that mold through an oven that bakes it. After they're done baking that mold, they glaze it with all that white glazing we've seen upstairs. They glaze it with that so it's nice and smooth and everything that's in the toilet will move through it with no problem at all. That's pretty much how it's made. There's a few components that go into the tank, but once we get the water into the bowl, it does exactly everything we just learned today. Great question. Why do toilets overflow? Oh. I have the same question myself because I go to a lot of overflowing toilets sometimes and typically it's because this part right here there's too much stuff that goes through there and it gets stuck here and then the mechanisms in the tank it's designed to stop right here but if this keeps flowing into the bowl that's when it overflows or somebody flushes it a second time. Most of the time, if it clogs, it's just enough water and it's going to sit right here at the top of the bowl. But this has to stop putting water into the bowl in order for that to do that. Why are toilets so funny? <laughs> That's a good question. I would say that there's a lot of toilet humor out there. And it I find it funny too, but I don't think I can give you a solid answer why I think it's funny. But I definitely find toilet humor funny, and I'm certain that my son might too. <laughs> How much water gets used when you flush the toilet one time? All modern toilets 
are gonna use in the United States are gonna use 1.6 gallons or less. Some of them are using 1.28 now, but, but all of them use 1.6 or less. But the ones before that, before Congress decided that, hey, whoa, let's stop using so much water, were 3.5 gallons of water. And some of the really old toilets out there from the late 1800s were up to five gallons. Five gallons. That's a lot of water. So it's, you guys think it's better that we're using less water now? Yeah. Way better. What did people do before toilets and plumbing was invented? It, they had outhouses outside in the back that they would have to go outside. And typically they had a hole in the ground and all of their waste would go into the ground. We can go way, way back. And the Romans had some of the early forms of sewers that were out there 2,000 years ago. But at a certain point, they stopped having sewers like that, but they, they would just, the waste would just drop into the sewer and then it would go away. So there was, uh, but for the most part, it just went into a hole in the ground. How does the tank fill? Oh, that's a good question. We have a lot of toilets upstairs. Do you guys want to see how it flushes? Yeah. Let's go check it out. Yeah. Yeah. So how does the water from up here get down to the bowl to create the siphon? So what happens is we have a lever that we use right here. And once we push that lever, it has a floating device down there that's going to lift and float until it puts the right amount of water into the bowl, which creates the siphon. And now this guy is going to refill the tank and the water that comes out of here is refilling the bowl. Because if you remember in our 3D model, we had to have the right amount of water down there to create the siphon. So that's exactly what's happening right here. How does it know when to stop filling? Oh, great question. This little float right here is coming up with the water level. It's gonna float up, and this arm is gonna shut this valve off right here. So any second, right there. Now, if I was to do this, that's gonna fill water. But how it knows that it needs to turn it off is that this guy is gonna float up and push this arm up. Once it engages, turns the water off completely. So, like, that's the noise every time, like, somebody's done going to the bathroom and they're washing their hand, that's the noise, the tank, the water's just refilling, and that's the noise? Yeah, that's the noise. You flush the toilet, you're washing your hands, you're like, man, that thing is noisy over there. It's just putting water back into the tank and into the bowl. Thank you so much for teaching us this, all this information about toilets. It's my pleasure to have you guys here today to learn all about the toilets. And I hope when you guys go home, you'll look at your toilets in a way different light when you go in your own bathroom. Uh, now you know exactly how it works and where the water's going. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Raymond. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn more about toilets, print some coloring book pages, or even download a 3D model of a toilet, check out our website, ourlittleworld.show for these resources for kids and grown-ups alike.